So I'm going to try to do that again. But without a pulpit to constrain me, I very may easily just wander off the screen. So whoever watches this, I'm incredibly sorry. Uh, there is a difference between knowing about someone and knowing them. When you know about someone, you know basic information about them. You, tick, you pick up tidbits from, uh, from friends or family or news sources or the internet or whatever it is. Uh, before Alicia and I met, she knew a lot about me. Everybody assumed we had a, we had a bunch of mutual friends. Uh, but we had never met, and so everybody assumed that we knew each other, but we didn't. So they would regale her with stories about me. But if you had asked her at that point, do you know Kyle Norman, she probably would have said, no. I don't know him, but I've heard a lot about him. Everything brilliant. But, <laughs> uh, because there's a difference, right? And in some sense, it's an indescribable difference. There is something about knowing someone that talks about intimacy, Kind of an intimacy, a connection which is born over time, uh, which is in some sense indescribable. A connection which is rooted in love or affection. Uh, and it's a sense of living with the one you know. You live life together in whatever parameter of relationship that might be. So the question I think posed to us this morning is a fairly simple one. Do we know Jesus as our shepherd? Jesus says something very definitive about himself in our gospel reading. I am the good shepherd. And he actually said that twice so that we could just make sure that that was important. He speaks about some of the ins and outs of what that means. And the challenge for us is not to simply understand those words. Not to simply understand what Jesus is saying about himself and what he wants to do. The challenge is to respond, to respond to, to live, to be connected with Jesus, just as a sheep responds to, lives with, and is connected to the shepherd. So what does it mean to have Jesus as the shepherd of our lives? In the context of what Jesus says, I think it means three things. Firstly, it means that we need to acknowledge and live in the midst of his presence. The nature of the shepherd is to be with the sheep. That's kind of the, the job description. This becomes clear when we know a little bit about uh, what Jesus is saying and in the context that he's saying it. Jesus' speech, what he says in the Gospel of John at this point, is during the Feast of Dedication. And that's like one of the high feasts of the Jewish temple. And normally during that big feast, just like at Christmas and Easter we read the same thing year after year after year, same with the temple of, in the temple and the Feast of Dedication. They would read year after year the specific passage from Exodus chapter 34, which talks about, and it's, it's kind of a biting passage, because God uh, talks against Israel's false shepherds. The leaders, particularly the religious leaders, who abuse the power for their own glory, who devour the sheep, it says. It's quite a sharp passage. God speaks quite harshly, against the false shepherds, the false leaders. And out of that, God says in Ezekiel chapter 34, so I myself, I myself will search for my sheep. I will seek them. And then it says, God says, I will be the shepherd for my sheep. It's, and, and it moves into quite this really beautiful passage. So in the background of the temple elite, and Jesus is speaking to Pharisees at this point, in the background of speaking to Pharisees, to people of the temple, who are spending a lot amount of time in the temple hearing about God lambasting false shepherds and saying, I will come and be their shepherd, Jesus stands up and says, guess what? I'm the good shepherd. I'm the one. I'm the one who will seek. I'm the one who is searching for my sheep. Jesus pits himself against the hired hands, against the thieves, against the bandits, against the false leaders, who will leave the sheep in the presence of difficulty or in danger. When the wolf rears its ugly head, they say, See ya, I'm on my own. The hired hand, Jesus says, who is not the shepherd, sees the wolf and runs away. He runs away because he does not care for the sheep. And although Jesus doesn't say it, the, the unstated reverse is clear. Jesus is saying, I care. That's why I'm here. 
I'm caring for my sheep, and that's why I'm present with you. It is bold and it is radical uh, what Jesus is saying, and everybody gets it, which is why in verse 20, which we didn't read, everybody says, this guy has a demon. This guy's out of his mind. What's he saying? We are called today to live in the midst of Christ's presence with this intimate connection that is born only through a willingness on our part to connect. Jesus says that the relationship between sheep and shepherd is very much mimics the intimacy between God the Son and God the Father. He says, I'm the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Sometimes I wonder if we spend a little bit too much time thinking about all the ways that Jesus knows us. Jesus in the brilliance of who he is. Jesus knows our thoughts. He knows the intentions of our hearts. The Bible says he knows our name. He counts all the hairs on our head. You know, he, Jesus, he knows us. But this is only half the relationship. To follow Jesus as our shepherd, to truly pray and live out that first line of our psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. We must know him. I know my own. And my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. Jesus lives out the will of the Father, and his life is intimately intertwined with the Father's life and the Father's will. So how well do you know Jesus in your life? Again, we're not talking about facts. We're not talking about knowing kind of an entrance exam into heaven, and if, if we get 80%, man, we're in. It's not, what we're, it's not what we're talking about. Looking up information on Wikipedia is not the same thing as knowing and being intimately known. You cannot know the shepherd unless you are willing to see your life in the context of his presence. And it means we seek out times of fellowship to spend time with the one who is there. And it doesn't have to be a big thing. right? Last summer when it was all nice and warm, I decided that I was going to walk around for about an hour and a half along Noah's Hill. And this wasn't going to be a prayer walk. This wasn't a, a highly spiritual thing. I had just decided that, you know what, I want to go for a walk. And I am going to walk in the same kind of manner uh, that I walk with Alicia. But I'm going to walk with Jesus. Just like I can walk with my wife along a path, and we don't have to talk. We can just walk and enjoy each other's company. I'm going to try to do that with God. What would it look like if you did that same thing? Try to live your life in the context of the presence of Jesus there. That all the activity at your home is done in the context of Jesus' presence. All the activity of your office life is done in the context with Jesus right there. I like to say that if, Je if you understood Jesus as sitting in the car beside you, would you drive as fast as you do? Because uh, that's one of the things that helped me slow down. <coughs> Speeding tickets are the other thing, but, um, <laughs> you know, what we try, it's, 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 a, it's a willingness. It's, it's a decision to try to live our life in the midst of this contact. To say, I'm going to try to recognize that Jesus is here. The sheep live in the presence of the shepherd. They know him because they have become familiar with that presence. Like a choir who becomes familiar with the motions of the conductor. Is that, I hope that's right. Uh, <laughs> sheep become familiar with the movements of the shepherd simply because they have experienced those movements time and time.